is faith without works useless or is faith without works dead? The manuscripts, early Greek manuscripts, have it both ways, so we have a question to solve in this video, or at least explore. But there's a greater question that affects this whole passage of James. It affects this entire passage of James, chapter 2, verses 20 through 24. Today, in looking at 20, the question of how does this paragraph from James prove to the foolish man his point. In order to do that, we're going to have to go beyond our Western English-speaking 21st century viewpoint and dive into the Jewish world of the rabbis because James was speaking to the brethren scattered abroad, that is, the Jewish Christians in the diaspora, outside of the Jerusalem area, outside of the land. And we have to dive into the world of the rabbis, the viewpoint of the rabbis, how they saw the world and especially how they saw Scripture and their spiritual history as recorded in Scripture, which is our spiritual history also. So let's look at how the binding of Isaac proves that faith that is unaccompanied by works is really nothing at all and why that is important. And interest in the Savior's blood died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to death pursued. So, James chapter 2 and verse 20. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? That's a simple verse. And standing alone, kind of hard to decipher. Again, proving that the proof from the verse is frequently as useless as faith without works. What can you prove from this verse, standing alone? Well, to do that, we have to look ahead a little bit. And what is ahead is the story known in Jewish circles as the binding of Isaac. Now, I have a little experience in that world, 20 years of it. 20 years I was married to the synagogue president's daughter. For many of those years I was a member of first one synagogue, conservative synagogue, and then another conservative synagogue. And for 18 years I kept a strict kosher household. That's the world that this is set in. That's the world that this foolish man is coming from. Why is that important? I remember every year in synagogue, because I was going every week, every Saturday to synagogue, plus the high holidays, almost as important as the high holidays. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, 
Shavuos. Almost as important was the sun was the Saturday, the fourth Saturday in the cycle of reading the Torah. When we would come to Parashat Vayera, and it was like drum roll. This is the Parashat Vayera. Why is that important? Because it included the Akeda, Akeda, the binding of Isaac. The word means binding. Now we look in our Sunday school classes, we all saw, you know, the sacrifice of Isaac, which wasn't really sacrificed. It was the lamb that was sacrificed. Then we, it might be titled in our Sunday school books, the, the ram in the thicket. But it's the binding that is important in the Jewish mind. The point where it went from we're just walking up the mountain till Isaac realizes he's about to have a knife to his throat. And the whole question of why he didn't fight his father over that. And the question of why did Abraham go ahead. That this is the crucial moment of the faith of Abraham. And that's why James Jacob, Yaakov in Hebrew, said to this Jewish audience, are you fools? Don't you see? And then talked about the binding of Isaac. Because there was an issue among the rabbis. They debated the subject who is more pleasing in God's eyes, the one who studies Torah or the one who does what is spoken in Torah without studying it? And they came to the conclusion that the person who studies Torah is much more pleasing in God's eyes than the one who simply obeys it all. Hear me. The Jewish mindset from their leaders, the Pharisees, the scribes, the teachers of the law, was that knowing the right theological truth by study was more important than living it. And James says, you foolish man. Don't you see the center of your faith the, that you profess the whole point that I that Abraham is a righteous man which you center every year when you come to Parashat Vayera and you hear ab again about the Akedah you say that that shows that our father Abraham through whom we get our righteousness is the righteous man it is what he did not that what he did earns him with God it's not the point. But that his trust in God was demonstrated there. It was not demonstrated by him knowing all the theology. I see a lot of people on YouTube that argue over whether we are predestined or not. Are we predestined to be saved or do we choose God's offer of the gift of salvation? And some of them see it as the most important thing is whether you're right on that question. Do you have your details of theology right? And James is saying, you foolish man. What is important is that your faith, your belief, just as Paul said, your being fully convinced that God will keep his promises, that that faith, being convinced that God will keep his promises, is deep enough that it changes your life. If you believe that God has made these promises, you will act in accordance with the reality that these promises are real and will be kept. And if you don't live according to the reality that God's promises will be kept, He's saying that is non-faith. That is empty faith. That is the word faith without the reality of faith.
So is it useless or is it dead? Now, it would, this lesson would be a lot easier to teach if I concluded that the original was dead. But I know enough about how the manuscripts are preserved and to know that it says dead in 17 and it says dead in 26. Well, hope well, then it's dead. See, we'll, we'll vote. No. That means it's more likely a copyist error where it says dead. He's thinking about 17 or thinking about 26 when he wrote dead. And then originally says useless. Makes it a little harder to teach the lesson. Because then I have to say useless. Hmm. Wait a minute. Without the works, it doesn't save you? No. Without the works, it's just a word. That's the meaning of useless here. Not that, oh, you have real faith, which would be saving faith. But I'm sorry you didn't have any work, so we can't count it. No. No. It's saying that this word that you call, that you're saying, oh, faith. I'm going to define faith as believing the right five statements of fact. No. That definition of faith, he's saying, is useless. That definition of faith is useless. And the pretended faith that tries to claim that knowledge of salvation is pure Gnosticism. It's useless. The faith that God demands is the faith that you trust God so much that you lean on Him and you lean on his every promise.